something a little odd today. A uh, co-worker handed me this thing, which looks like a little um, card or something. It says the Lincoln Motor Company on one side. And on the other side, it says your private viewing awaits. And he said it was pretty funny, so I opened it up. And there's a display. It's showing a little battery indicator, and if you hit play... So as you can see it plays a video and it's something they just mail out. On the side there's a mini USB port and if you plug it in it shows up as a USB device. Uh, it's a 256 megabyte uh, drive. It just shows up as a standard USB stick. Uh, it's got the volume label ACT disc and it is a FAT32 format. Now, if you uh, look in the USB information, you can see that it's actually an Actions Media Player USB device. So apparently, uh, Actions Media Player USB devices are essentially just the system on a chip they use for uh, lots of very, very cheap MP3 players. Now, I also did some research and found a rather interesting uh, blog post where someone actually opened this thing up and um, a different one. They, they um, apparently manufacture this, this standard design and then there was one branded for Mercedes. And uh, yeah, they opened it up uh, because it only charged and their version uh, actually had the data lines cut from the USB port, which is kind of funny. But uh, this one actually works just fine. Uh, I didn't have to do any modifications to it. And the device itself has a photo diode somewhere. I haven't been able to figure out where it is unless it's seen through the, like the little gap down here. I don't see any openings in this thing. So I'm not really sure where how it's detecting that this is open. I mean, at least theirs has a photo diode. I know this one turns on when you get to about here, but I haven't actually been able to find anything that uh, is doing it. So uh, yeah, it's just um, cardboard. And um, the screen is quite poor. The pixel density is very low on this thing. And uh, you can see there's a whole bunch of crud on it. but. You know, on video, I guess it looks okay. And it's got a horrible viewing angle. It just turns to garbage immediately when you uh, turn it even slightly. So it's probably a really cheap TN panel. But yeah, you got to wonder how they're making any money off these things. I mean, I get that the Lincoln Continental is not a cheap car, but I mean, it's not a Rolls Royce or something. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know um, how much profit they turn from one of these things. Although uh, I don't think they really mass mail them. I did some image searching and I found that uh, some pe th there's it comes in like a fancy box with a USB charger and stuff. So they probably send it out only to select clients and stuff. So uh, you know it's kind of, it's kind of funny that they're going through all this expense just to to sell you something. But I guess you know you get huge catalogs and stuff in the mail, so it doesn't it's not that surprising, I guess. Because the device just shows up as a regular drive with a single MP4 file on it, it's pretty easy to change it. Seems that you need one to turn it on. So let's take a look inside this thing. Um, from what I saw, it's just a very small PCB with uh, just a flex, flex cable going off to the LCD, but who knows, this one could be different. Um, let me just see if we can do this delicately and then ultimately destroy it. Oh, yeah, that's not coming off properly at all. Okay, so get rid of all that. What is going on in here? Well, there's 
a sheet of plastic over this for one. And it looks like we've got a sensor here, speaker, the main board, and the USB connector. Okay, so let me see if I can get all this paper off this thing. There's foam blocks everywhere, which seem to be giving the whole thing its rigidity. Okay, that's all the paper. Well, most of it, at least. Okay, so here's the the button. It's just a standard large tactile switch. It's kind of funny. We got a fairly large battery, thousand milliamp hours. It's got protect protection circuit on it, which is nice to see. And I guess we have to go in through this side. Um, I have no intention of keeping this for anything. I mean, it's kind of cool, but. Let's face it, it's got 256 megabytes of storage. What the hell are you going to use it for? I mean, I'm sure you could rig it up in some way to do uh, uh, some kind of funny photo frame thing. But again, it's only one, one image or one video and it's going to be pretty low quality. Okay, so here's the sensor. Not really sure how they're working the sensor. Oh, it's not an optical one on this one. This one is actually, it looks like it's um, a Hall effect sensor. There must be a, hang on, where'd I put the, uh, the top of this thing? The, um, the top of the case must have a, uh, a Hall effect, or a, a small magnet. Let's just uh, open this up real quick and take a look, if we can. Yep, there it is. One little, uh, looks like a little cheapo magnet. Well, that explains why I couldn't find any, uh, any openings for an optical sensor. And the uh, screen, I think, is like a five inch one or something like that. But let's see how much we can get out of this thing. Oh God, there's so much glue there is on this it's a USB port. out. Again, not concerned about breaking this thing. Maybe I can just like cheat and hack it out from this side. Well, there's the speaker, 8 ohm, 2 watt. Uh, it sounds terrible, probably because it was pointing at a big piece of plastic and slash paper. It's just a really cheap, really cheap speaker. And we've got the battery pack. Now it's pretty clear that this thing's um, built by, uh, they, they probably put the, the plastic down first and then build it around the plastic. So as you can see, there's, there's hot glue that's stuck to the plastic side. So this was this was face this was the bottom originally when they were putting it together. So let me just okay see this is none of this is connectorized so let me just uh, disconnect the battery real quick. Move that away. Yeah very cheap battery although it does have a protection circuit on it. I guess that's acceptable. And we got strands of hot glue everywhere. And the cheap button, which, wow. Wow, this is, this is like a piece of a cardboard box. It looks like it's a picture of a smokestack. And <laughs> it's like a cutout square of a picture picture of a smokestack on some cardboard yeah and there's even something on the other side too but it's like a, it looks like it it wasn't complete um, let me just snap all this off since I don't exactly need this and wow okay so they, 
<laughs> they took a standard tactile button. Let me just focus a little closer. I'm shooting manual focus today for no real reason. And uh, yeah, they just took a little backing piece of plastic with some some image on it. And uh, <laughs> wow, it is a tall tactile switch though. Well, I guess they went out of their way to get a, a tall one specifically. And uh, okay, so let's see our USB port now on the uh, one I was looking at on the blog post. Uh, the ports or the um, two center data pins were were disconnected. They were cut, and uh, it also went through a proper cord, I believe, like a, a sleeved uh, connector. But you know, not that that's really that all that important. And again, well, this one's actually on a PCB, so I guess that's an upgrade to the other one. The USB connector is actually top quality on a PCB. And uh, that was the speaker. Oh, no. What was this connected to? Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Um, oh, that was the switch. That was the switch. So these are the battery, or the speaker leads. Just cut these off at the source. Rid of some more foam. Here's a little PCB with the Hall effect sensor on it. It's got a uh, ground uh, VCC and a, an output pin. And it says off on V1. And uh, yeah, this one's actually on a little PCB. Um, this one might be like a separate, like a module, almost like those little Arduino ones that you can buy. Because uh, for one, it's on a different PCB material to everything else. And two, it looks like one of those little standard modules, somewhat. I mean, it's just hot glued in there. The display is this paper backing, so if there is a label on it, it's going to be a pain to get to. So not too concerned, it's a really cheap display. Um, yeah, I ripped a little flat flex cable when I was taking it off because again don't care and uh, oddly enough this flat flex has a whole bunch of resistors and caps on it which is a little unusual I usually don't see I usually don't see too many passives on an LCD flat flex seems a little unusual and see if I can open up this whole module this is this looks almost like galvanized uh, steel, but it's uh, it looks like it's just cheap steel. I don't know. It's got an unusual pattern to it. And no surprises, it's just a pretty standard LCD. You have the white backing, which reflects all the light from the backlight, which appears to be a little strip of uh, white LEDs. And we've got all the diffusers and fancy optical stuff that helps get all the light where it needs to be. Backlight. Ooh. You can really see the uh, low pixel density by the patterns it's making on the uh, display or on the video. Uh, there's a little chip on board down here. A little uh, sliver of a chip. But yeah, pretty standard. Here's the board. And we've got what appears to be the uh, main chip, which is an ATJ22730. We've got some memory, and probably the flash memory here. This looks like um, system memory. And a little DC to DC converter. Now, there's a whole bunch of outputs. Now, this is where the, um, what was connected to this? Might have been either the speaker or the, the um, switch or something. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of outputs with resistors on it, so it looks like this is uh, pretty configurable. You can see all the parallel traces running to the memory and also to the LCD. Nothing on the back. 73C25 revision 3, uh, 2015. Uh, this I believe just showed up in the mail the, um, very recently. Got some test points here, or uh, at least labeled connectors. Battery, blah, 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 blah. Oh, and the A, B, C, D down here are probably the um, just the plain um, like GPIO pins. 
So yeah, pretty basic system. Uh, you know, this is obviously just modified from like an MP3 player or something along those lines. Any any kind of basic consumer product. Uh, this chip's probably an audio amplifier for the speaker. And yeah, nothing else. I mean, it looks like it's uh, just got a couple little DC to DC converters. One's probably doing the. This is probably stepping up for the backlight, and this is probably running everything else. Yeah, kind of interesting and funny. I mean, man, I mean, uh, how much are these things making them if uh, they're building these? Obviously, they're built really cheaply, but you know, I wonder how much this thing costs to make. But I guess if you sell a fifty or $60,000 car once in a while, it's maybe worth it. I don't know.